G'day, welcome back to the 40 channel. So we've got Jack here today. Jack hasn't been uh, in one of the uh, episodes for some time. Welcome back, Jack. Thank you. Good to see you. Now, here at the 40 channel, we've got some really, really exciting news, don't we, Jack? Yes. But we don't want to give away too much of what is going to be happening. You, you've given it away. Oh, well. <laughs> Terrain Tamer. So Terrain Tamer have come on board and they're gonna help us out with some parabolic springs, suspension, bushes, shackles, the whole lot. How exciting. Awesome. It is absolutely awesome. I've been looking at parabolic springs for a long, long time. They've been none available for the 40 series Land Cruiser until October last year, around your birthday. Actually, on your birthday, they got released at Clex, which is why the reason we didn't make it at Clex, it was Jack's 18th. But that's when they were released, and Terrain Tamer are the first company in the world that I know of to do 40 series parabolic springs. I'm super pumped. Terrain Tamer have been working years and years to get this spot on. Found a lot, and my shocks are shot. They are destroyed, so they really need to be upgraded. So what better way to pair it all up Parabolic springs, terrain tamer, shocks, terrain tamer, bushes, terrain tamer, shackles. It's all terrain tamer. So let's get into it, eh? Let's do it. Right, eh? Right, so what we're doing is, the first thing we're going to do is we've removed the tyres, that's obvious. The next thing we've done is push the tyres just up underneath, underneath the hoist arm. So if something does give way, if the safeties fail or something, at least it hits down on the tyres and not on top of us. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to leave the shocks attached. So that way, the whole suspension will be supported by the shocks and just held up in place. Removing the old U-bolts, we're going to keep all the old components, just put them aside. You never know if you ever need a spare or anything like that. Or then we can start removing the old springs. Right, okay, so you can see the axle is separated from the springs and it's held up by those shocks. So that's going to come very handy for when we go to remove these springs here. Very old socks, very worn out. They've seen their day. Eat that, Jack. Right, right, we're gonna remove the rear hanger first. This is gonna make it swing down, rest on the front, then we can remove the front, slide it straight out. The front retaining bolt comes out, the rear bolt comes off. Now just watch that, Jack. That's it, lower that straight to the ground, that way it's a lot safer than trying to uh, drop the front out and coming it swing back at you. You want to make sure that there's no damage around here and make sure there's no damage in your back hole as well. If it's had old springs or bushes and it's worn through, this is the first place it's going to damage. You want to make sure there's no cracks. Give you, make sure you give your support shackle a really good inspection right over it because you don't want to have any damage because it's only going to cause dramas down the track. Watch your feet. Righto, do a quick comparison, mate. So as you can see, this one is a lot heavier, a lot thicker, not as agile. And the same comparison goes with the springs too. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is a seven pack spring pack. It is heavy. It is fat. There's no way it's as agile. This one here, there's nothing between the spring packs at all. So you're really getting a lot of friction between each spring. 
You can even just see it started to wear just in here. It's not too bad, these ones I've seen a lot worse, but see that there? Starting to get a lot of wear right through that spring. The terrain tamer springs, they don't actually touch. Then you've got like this anti-friction pad in here. Not only a smoother ride, but a more quieter ride too. Gives it room to flex. You don't have that friction of metal trying to rub on metal. I think it's going to be pretty good. But yeah, the weight difference, as you said, Jack. Oh, right as. It's incredible. You're looking at around half the weight. So hopefully that just uh, reduces the weight and gives us a bit of fuel economy, especially when we do the engine conversion. Yeah. Righto, let's get him in. Just using a dead blow hammer to put the bushes in. Uh, Jack's put all the bushes in. Next thing we're going to do is we're just going to uh, lube the inside of the bushes. Now the cool thing is, the terrain tamer pack come in this really cool little bag. But they also supply the correct grease. You only put the grease in the inside of the bush and then you can uh, hit the bushes in. Don't put the grease on the outside of the bush. You don't want to do that. Now, Jack's put all the bushes in and I've told him to leave this particular bush out. It just makes installation a little bit easier when you're coming up to this point here and I'll show you why that's easier right now. Tap it in with the hammer. No. Oh, muscles. Right now we've chosen one of the hottest days, it's a big heat wave to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, we close the door, just try to cool it down, and Shelly's come down to try to look after us. Thanks, Shell. Oh, fan. that's our biggest fan. <laughs> Mum is our biggest fan. Oh, and that. Oh, and this is all we got. <laughs> nice. Right, uh, front shackles in. Actually, it's so light I could do it myself. How good is that? You don't need my help. Right, the bolts are doing that, mate. That's right, man. It's perfect. Right, so just do everything up finger tight until we get the springs up in place, and then we'll talk all the bolts up later. Right, so now here's the reason I've left the bush out of the rear of the spring before we put it up in the hangar. Now, the other thing is, these are military wrapped. Now, the, the idea with the military wrap is if for some unforeseen reason it breaks, then hopefully that extra wrap will catch the spring and uh, cause less damage. So the military wrap always goes to the solid part of your chassis where there's no shackle. So straight bolt up, that way it's gonna give a stronger, better support if something happens. That'll never happen. Famous oh, these ones. Right, I say, this gonna, Jack's gonna lift it up and we're gonna show you why we've left that bush out. That way, now we've got room to put this bush in. You can see why it's a lot easier to get that bush in after than before. Line your retainer bolt up. Put that in. Be very careful around your brake line. I've seen it where people put them over and pinch their brake lines. Make sure you don't do that. Just line everything up and we just do everything up just really loose so then we can adjust it all later. We've got a center pin going through the leaf spring pack. We need to line that up with the bottom of our support and the top of our axle. So we can move our axle around. You can see it's just hanging off the shocks at the moment. So we can move that into position and then torque everything back up. Righto, so the driver's side, well, the driver's side for Australia, uh, I guess it'll be the passenger side for the US. The closest side to your puncture on your diff, you've got your square U bolt. Well, it's not really a U bolt if it's square, yeah. is it, Jack? Square bolt. <laughs> square bolt. Anyway, that slips just in the back side of here, closest to your puncture diff. Again, watch out for those brake lines. We don't want to do anything silly and pinch them. Drop that down, you can see it's nice and flat there. Then our U-bolt, U-bolt, slides straight over that round part of the axle. Right, so we're just lining up our center pin and getting everything just nice and loose so we've got lots of movement 
to line everything up later. Ready? Perfect. Hold it there. It's like a leg press at the gym, Jack. <laughs> oh, arms. Leg day, arm day, all in one. All of the above. So it certainly helps when you've got a strong young lad. Set of clubs. To line everything up. <laughs> Get a workout in. Otherwise, pry bars uh, will also be very helpful. What do you need pry bars for when you've got legs like Jack's? Right, so as we bring up our bolts really slowly, we want to make sure that our center pin lines up with our hole at the bottom of the axle. So just nice and slow. Right, so now it's all aligned. I can just see through all these gaps. My center pin through the spring pack is all aligned up with the bottom of the axle and the bottom of our fish plate. <laughs> I just said <laughs> without smacking your head. <laughs> right, oh, so the rear is a little bit different because the shocks are mounted uh, to your support plate underneath, not to anything else that we can leave it hanging with. So Jack's undone everything here, and we actually put stands up under the axle, and then we can lower it down on that. Then we can safely leave the axle in place. And we can safely remove these leaf springs. Now, these leaf springs are monstrous. These leaf springs, they reckon, are around 60 odd kilos, so they're pretty heavy. Um, luckily, I've got Jack here to help me lift these out. You ten. will need 10. Oh, yeah. 10 leafs on this compared to, I think, the three on the yeah. parabolic. But hey, well, let's lower it down on that and um, we'll start ripping off these Goliath springs, eh? <laughs> yeah, so monstrous. Last time I hold the big heavy one, so this time it's your turn. I don't know, I honestly don't think I'll be able to. I try. Bend of the knees. How easy is that? What are you talking about? Oh, look at him go! Sugar. <laughs> right, eh? Oh, really? You can see the difference. Oh. <laughs> Jack's got nearly 60 kilos of leaf spring, where I have about 30, so nearly <laughs> half the size. It's incredible. How you going there, buddy? <laughs> the beauty with the parabolic spring is when you're doing comparisons, you've got hand grips. So it makes it easier to lift up and down and, and uh, show them off. So, But incredibly impressive with the size difference between the two springs, isn't it, Jack? Yeah. It's amazing. Right, uh, let's throw the rear on and uh, then we'll move on to the shocks. Right, I uh, see so your terrain tamer shock absorbers. It's pretty cool actually what they've done here is you've got your original rubbers, so your normal rubbers that go in with your, your shock, but they've actually given us, in replacement of that, some polyurethane bushes and that will last a heck of a lot longer. Polyurethane bush just there. Sit that in the shock. Put in your vise, make sure you've got some soft jaws on there. Line it all up, close your vise up. Done. There was a lot of pressure on the front shocks as we had the full front axle hanging off it. So we thought it'd be better if we could put the uh, wheels on it, bring it back down on the ground, just to take a bit of that pressure off the uh, old shocks. And now we can uh, hopefully just knock them straight off and put the new terrain tamers on. Nice work. Last thing is don't forget to put the grease nipples in. 65 foot pound torque. Righto, so we just had an absolute battle, which we didn't film, we should have, removing the old steering dampener. The old steering dampeners have like a, a taper. They lock up into your brackets on your chassis. This one was fairly easy to get to. One big belt with the hammer came straight out. That was okay. This one up here, obviously, because you're going to try to knock it down, a lot more difficult. What we ended up doing was putting a pry bar right up in the top here, putting a lot of pressure on it, then heating the steering arm just around where the taper was, and then giving it a shock with a hammer, and then bang, it popped out. Righto, so 
That's it, Jack. Bit of a mammoth day, but we've got all new springs, all new shocks, all new bushes, all new shackles, new steering dampener, parabolic technology from Terrain Tamer. You like that? Parabolic <laughs> technology. <laughs> Big words. Anyway, we're not going to give you too much a review how it rides because I want to do about at least 200 Ks in these in different situations and different environments. And we're going to let you know a full review on how it feels on pretty much all surfaces from highways to corrugations to full on rutted out fire trails. So that's, so that's to come. So just hang on for that one and subscribe and you'll keep up to date with that. But anyway, until right now, we're going to jump in it. We're going to go for a quick drive down to the highway. I think we're going to get an ice cold slushy because we are exhausted. Done. It is a yeah. <laughs> hot, hot day. You're right, mate. You're right. So, anyway, guys, thanks so much for your support. Thanks for Terrain Tamer. Definitely jump on the Terrain Tamer webpage. There's a whole lot of supplies out there to supply this stuff. And uh, we'll put some links down below. What are you doing? You're just throwing the better away. Right, hey, so until next time. Thanks for watching. Oh, I was covering my face. I was a little.